At least never heard an F you again ever yeah. when we started, from the day we started. And instead of, I'm doing what I want, she would then she would call Tati, I'm stuck in Brooklyn, can you come get me? It's two in the morning and the train's not running. And he would go. But what a difference where I'm doing what I want, you can't come, until Tati, like, I, I, can you come get me? You know, like, that changed really, like, extremely quickly. But what a difference. It was just, just by stopping the fight. Like, before we even really started doing anything, it was just, it stopped the fight. Like, just starting TP was, like, just understanding the whole thing is about the relationship and she needs your parents. We had a daughter who was uh, 15 at the time, and she was um, um, giving us uh, a lot of uh, a run for our money with uh, a lot of frustration. Um, you know, I'm sure... Uh, Hanging many- out in the park, there was drugs, there was... Right. Um, cursing and p- being in places she shouldn't be. Right. Um, basically, uh, cursing you. Cursing us. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, hundred percent. Sure. Yeah, basically, like if I would, if uh, you know, if you tried to, you know, do normal parenting of, uh, you know, having some boundaries or some kind of rules or some kind of uh, sneaking out of the house. You know, like, look, you know, you have your, you know, your job. I remember saying things like, "Your job now." My job is I go to work and sell insurance, and that's what I do every day. Everyone has to have a job. Your job is, you're 15, your job is to go to school and uh, do this, do this, like whatever the normal type of stuff. And uh, no, you can't, you cannot go on a train by yourself to Manhattan at uh, the middle of the night or whatever going on. But basically, uh, so then it would be, you know, you get a text message, what's that basically saying, uh, you know, showing like you. Loca- a location, showing here I am. You can't do anything about it, and F you, basically, you know, more or less. Um, and uh, I w- there would be a lot of a lot of cursing, like you know, so if it was like you know, sometimes it'd be like like a hundred a hundred times the same, you know, the, 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 the same the same message. Um, Even violence, she was violent. We violence, also, yeah, yeah. We yeah. were told to call Shomer, like right, the psychologist right, said, right, call right, Shomer right, instead, call Shomer. you know, so that teach her a lesson. The whole thing about it, it was a disaster. Yeah, yeah, it was very a disaster. Uh, she had a psychologist, and the psychologist said, like, if there's an issue, if she's getting, if she's threatening the family, or if she's threatening, you should call. You should call. Did they say call it Sola? Call it Sala. Sorry, yeah. not Chairman. We call it Sala. So, so we yeah. did it. We call it Sala. I think they even put a call in to say we might call. And they we, we called and they came and it was, my husband was literally on the floor with her wrestling. It was terrible. And yeah. they came and they tried to calm her down and it was just a disaster. Basically, we tried a lot of things that every parent should try or does, does try, I'm sure. Um, you know, psychologists, uh, we, we heard about these psychologists in Brooklyn. We went to try those. Oh, we tried a few. Saw a couple of women. I can't, uh, yeah. We, we went to um, psychologists where we live. We went to, um, you know, trying to get advice about how to deal with a child like this. Um, we, were cut, we would say things like, I remember, I remember you mentioned, we, we said things like, um, look, you know, I, my, my, my goal is that the child, that, that my daughter should be like a normal functioning member of society. You know, if she doesn't like me, fine, but she can't be like, you know, going crazy and doing things and breaking things and whatever's happening, that kind of stuff is, and it, and it was so like, um, I guess like out of, I would say almost like out of character because, um, she was always, yeah, before she was, that she was very sweet. When, she really yeah, was. Like she was always like, like the, the best uh, kid as far as like smile. the most like mothering instincts towards her younger siblings yeah. and stuff like that. And later she like hated them all. She would say like, yeah. whatever, she doesn't want to, okay, chas you know, so, um, so basically, uh, yeah, like different therapists uh, spoke to different rabbis. A rav told us, uh, uh, a rav told us uh, not too long before we got to TP. A rav told us, you know, kick her out of the house. Like right. basically, I was ready to kick her out. I, I was. Yeah, that's yeah. where I was holding. I was like, yeah. after the Pesach incident, um, I was like, we have to get her out of here. And we called a rav, and we was, and he told us to call their people. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody heard what happened, and they approached my husband about TP, and he said, and he said. Let's try this first. 
Two probably like a good probably. A year, probably a good year, Absolutely. year and a half before we found our way to TP to um, trying to deal with this. You know, like it was you know, progressively getting worse. Right. Yeah. yeah, I was really ready to kick her out. Right. That's like, where I was holding. I'm like, how do we get her out of the house? Right, like it's, it's how not, do we get her uh, out without really putting her on the street? And right. that was really right, where, right, where, right, where I was that, holding. Yeah, yeah, it's like that kind of stuff. Like basically, right um, before, and then and even we even spoke to a rav who told us, yeah, you should kick her out. And, and then my husband, well, how do you kick a 15-year-old out? And whatever, he spoke about it. And after TP, he actually got in touch with that Rav and said, like, whoa, like, what about this TP? And, and then he, the Rav said, you know what, I've heard about it, and now I send people there. And I, uh, I apologize for, for telling you to kick yeah, her. Yeah, he did. He said, he he said it was like, he, he asked what the time frame was and when, I, when I had asked him to Shiloh about it or asked him advice about it, whatever. And he said at the time it was... Um, it was probably like six months before he, you know, found out about TP, and that then later he sent people to TP, and he was, uh, you know, impressed. Right. So basically, I guess like the the like when things got really really crazy was uh, Pesach. She was fifteen. 15 yeah, she was fifteen. Yeah, yeah? Mm-hmm. 50, she was fifteen years old. And it was Pesach, and. Um, we were nervous about, I was nervous about her going to the Pesach kitchen. We were yeah. nervous about her going to the Pesach right, right, kitchen. Yeah. She wasn't keeping Shabbos. She wasn't, I didn't know what she was going to do. So we had an extra lock on the Pesach kitchen that only I gave to my older daughter so she couldn't get in and out because she usually did, she did all the cooking that year. So Dina was furious. She was so furious because she wanted food and you're not getting me food fast enough. You know, the Seder lasts too long and <laughs> she wanted food. I want food. And it was a disaster. We, she, we wouldn't let her in the kitchen. And then, I don't know, she got, I don't know if she got into the kitchen or whatever it was. She threw food. She, all the food that our other daughter made, she threw it on the floor. She, there was, it, it was terrible. And like, then she like, was like, trying like, to get into the chameet's kitchen. She's like, I'm going, I'm going to get, like, I don't remember what she was going to get, but she was trying to get into the chameet's kitchen. So, and, and so we locked the door. My husband literally sat in front of the chameet's kitchen so she wouldn't go in, like with a pillow, so he would go to sleep in front of it. And Dina was blasting music. She just blared yeah. music the whole night. She turned the music on. Oh, that was so after she yeah, she <laughs> turned out all the lights in the house and all the candles. So it was dark it was on Pesach. Yeah, yeah, so it was yeah. totally dark. We couldn't finish. I couldn't finish dark, the Seder. Darkness, yeah. I couldn't finish it without seeing. Like it was a disaster. It was really a disaster. And the next day, I was I was speaking to people, and I like that was when I was like, okay, she's got to go. Like this is crazy. She said like she was gonna. Uh... She was gonna trade. Well, it's gonna come, get the, the house. Yeah, basically, right. So that's why she was trying to. We thought trying to get into the chametz kitchen. It was yeah. all about her anger at us, you know, and that we and that we didn't trust her to go in the pesach kitchen. I mean, that's what it was about. Yeah. That's why she was so angry. We didn't trust her to go in the kitchen to, to take food for herself. I mean, or any other year, even though she wasn't keeping kosher and she wasn't keeping Shabbos, okay, we treated her as if, but it, and there was no issue. She never tried to give trafe to any of the kids. She never tried to trafe up anything. Actually, one time she put something by accident that wasn't chavos in the oven and she told us and we and we called so Like, she, but it, she was so angry at us because we didn't trust her that then she was going to, then she was angry and then she was going to trafe up. The, but after that, she never did it again. After after TP, she would go into the Pesach kitchen and take whatever and I, we trusted her and I was never worried about her um, bringing chametz anywhere. It was just a different, it was a shift because we shifted. She also shifted. You know, we trusted her and, and then she was trustworthy. Dina was seeing a therapist one-on-one and, and you know, they talk about like ground, like rules. Boundaries. And, 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 uh, contra- was there contracts? Probably. I, I don't remember. remember having a contract. Vaguely remember. I do vaguely remember yeah. some contracts. Your office was in the little room. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, a contract yeah. posted on yeah, the bulletin yeah. board. Yeah. There was a contract. Yeah, there's contracts remember. and rules and um, things like that, which makes sense. Um, you know, parents, right. kids, rules, boundaries. But it doesn't work. It makes sense. I it think. makes sense. It's, it's logical, like it but it doesn't work. But uh, yeah, so like the therapist... Uh, just escalated. It just, it just escalated. It wasn't, it was not, it was not helping. It was, uh, it was making it worse actually over time. No one was able to figure a way out to help us to not escalate the situation yeah, to make it worse. So it was right. just getting worse and worse right. and nobody was able to tell us how to take it down. You know, in right. fact, all the thing about calling Hatsala, whatever, it, it just escalated it. 
it just made it worse. Literally, there was a time where I had to take all of our pictures away because she was taking a Sharpie yeah. and trying to Sharpie herself out of pictures. And actually, ironically, later, she she took the, to the exact opposite. She took a, she, she took, after TP, there was a time where she, now not on the real picture, but like on a, on a, on a WhatsApp, she took everybody else out and just had me, her, and my husband, like, that, that, that's it, you know, like that she's, instead of the opposite where she blotted herself out. It was a nightmare for our family before TP. It was really a nightmare. We were on eggshells. She would run to the park. Every, sometimes we would have the boys follow her to the park. Where's what she doing? Where's she going? She would sneak out of the house. She would go who knows where. She went, went to Muncie. She went to, I didn't even know, we didn't know what she was doing. And everyone was a little bit concerned about it. When my, our son when our son, I wish I had TP mind back then. When our son Ellie was born, she was so angry. She called us, I want pizza. And we're like, I just, I just had a baby. <laughs> like, I literally had a baby like an hour before. I, I can't get you pizza right now. Like, you have to, like, you're so selfish. But now with TP eyes, it would have been like, just get her the pizza. <laughs> like, she would have been fine. She During the Shalom Zucker, we realized she was missing. We couldn't find her. She had gone to the park. It was just, it was just everyone. Actually, I knew because my older daughter came and said, where's Dina? Like, she's not here, you know? So it just, it just put everyone on edge. Everyone was nervous. And, and, and there was some violence and throwing things. And it just, it was not good. Afterwards. I, the other kids. Some broken furniture. What? Broken furniture, broken <laughs> glasses. She's strong for a 15-year-old. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were literally wrestling with her yeah, on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was terrible. It was scary. It was scary for the little kids. They remember it. They yeah, remember yeah. Pesach. It's, it's traumatic. They even it's, remember Pesach and how sure, her sure. throwing food. and. It's, uh, that, that's traumatic for the for young kids to see their yeah. uh, sibling... Uh, Fighting with the parents so much control. or being so out of control. So, yeah, it's not. And us too, not, screaming and. and it's not good. It was not good for the family. And afterwards, it was. It, it definitely. Everyone had a relationship with her. And the, and the baby that she hated, that she was so angry about, became her best friend, like really became her pet. He would hang out with her. In fact, one time she showed us, she took a video. I didn't hear him crying, and her bedroom must be underneath his. And and um, she showed us that she took him out of his crib and she yeah. gave him pizza. The they hung night. out yeah. in the middle of the night. They were hanging yeah. out, and she loved him. She loved him. She she really she would take him to the park with her friends, and they they would go to the music in the park, and and she really. I also like, remember she took. Uh, she would take yeah. uh, Bacheva with, on the, with a stroller to the on the bus. Oh, yeah. She took to the mall. She went to yeah. the mall. She would take one of the other one, the two year old, the, the next one up. The next one yeah, up. So she was like two. Was like so two. she would take like her two year old sibling. That basically, like I said, I don't want to say, but basically, like she said that she was going to kill these kids. Basically, like for real, like she really. Yeah, she was before very TP. Like her, her yeah, words yeah, pre, were violent. Before for TP, sure. she would say like basically she's going to going to burn the house she's down. Burn the house like down. she she's said, terrible kill her things. siblings, like stuff like that, which was very. You know, Disconcerting. I mean, you see things in the news, you think like, right? It was very scary. You know, that's why. It that scary. really is why. Like the idea was, like, really, it's better to have someone not in the house than to have them in the house if they're. Right. If you really feel it, that's it's. If it's a possibility, it's for violence. It's for, for violence, sure. and uh, you like you don't want to believe it, but you don't know. Like, what if it's God forbid you, you know, something could happen. So, right. um, I, I'd like. I don't think. I don't think that that was ever going to really happen, but. You know, right? But yeah, we were. But either concerned. way, basically, if you say, if you say right. that, right? If you said that, like, that's it. Like, you know, right. you have to take it serious. After TP, she had a great relationship with everybody, like, not perfect, but very good. In fact, my she took my boys to. Um, she would take them to camp. Like, she was the one that drove them to their campus, and the little kids for sure. The little kids, she would bathe. Yeah, she was actually the one that would give them baths for sure. From the first day we came into TP, literally from the first day, what it did was take away the fight. Like we just, we calmed down. We, we said, changed. We're, we yeah. changed completely. Yeah. I mean, he, it was harder for me to change, but we both, like we just took away the fight. Just taking away the fight changed everything. It went from blank you, never, he, she never sent it again, ever, yeah. ever, never. It was just... It just, we just didn't fight with her. So just taking that away made it just a more calm place. The whole place was calm. And then by accepting her and saying we're sorry for hurting her and giving her the gifts. I mean, actually, the picture of the first gifts we gave her, she was very like, eh, 
Like she was, it was like she wasn't like maybe she didn't trust us, but I remember when we gave her that iPhone eight, she was what a smile! She was so happy. And from I, I don't know if who gave it to you, her like we gave it to her together. But I before TP, I smashed her phone. I took her phone and I smashed it. Well, I was so mad <laughs> about the phone and getting in the park, whatever it was. I took her phone and I smashed it, and that was uh, she was not happy. I don't remember what happened after that, but she was not happy. But that was. And and it, and part of it was like just showing that we trust you here. We try. I took the phone from you, and here it is. Here's a better phone, and um, and you know what? She, and yeah. Nicole had taken the knife out. Right, yeah. right. I took the we took the knife out by giving her the phone, and that was. I still I have those pictures. She was that she was really um, happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, the gifts and stuff like she she liked it. You know, I mean, it was. Um, it was nice. And we also did it for the other kids, not to the same extent, but, and not everything was big. Sometimes I would get her Dollar Tree stuff and leave a little gift or gloves or something, you know, it wasn't always huge things, but the big, you know, those big things were, were big, but, but, um, it definitely helped. I mean, just from that, just from that, um, just taking the, the, taking the fight and understanding that she's in pain, just understanding that she's in pain took away so much, uh, of our anger, like, oh, she's not trying to, uh, like, she's in pain, okay, and and understanding that she's in pain made it easier, it, it, when, but the truth is, it really got much, much better after that, not perfect, but much, much better, it just got so much better, and then she was able to have a relationship with everybody, so then everyone had their relationship with her, and because the kids came to the TP training for families, so all the kids were on board. Oh, and I forgot to say, before TP, she was also cutting. She was re- was really bad. Like, you know, I forget how bad it was after TP. She was not doing that anymore because she wasn't angry. She just wasn't as angry. Oh, was she, was she, she was still in pain, but she was, but she, now she had her family. She had her parents. She had her, she had her siblings. And she had a relationship with them. And, and, um, and the boys, actually, my two boys went to the, the thing for the boys' siblings and my and my older daughter went for the girls, and I think that that was also helpful. It was helpful for them to be there to have support from other people, and and to and they were good. They were pretty good. They also would buy her gifts sometimes for her birthday or for other things. They would they would they would try, you know. When things were out of control, I really you really start to think like, uh, is there like a mental illness issue? I remember um, I remember one time she, we would we were driving on the on the Southern State Parkway. I think we were going out to my mother's house to go swimming. And I, uh, she was like fighting with kids in the back. And I just basically, I, pu- I pulled the vehicle over and I'm like, I said, we're basically, I said, I'm taking you to the hospital. I'm taking you to the South Nassau. Oh, There's a psych right. ward there, I know, because I had to uh, visit somebody once there. I said, I'm taking you there. And that's it. I said, either you act normal or like you can't. I said, you're, you're 14, 15, whatever age she was at the time. I said, you're dealing with a little kid. I don't remember how, which kid it was or what I the fight was about. I said, this is like, this is not normal behavior. It was like really crazy stuff. Once we went through the training and once we uh, changed our, our mindsets, or I would say, I would say my wife kind of changed her mindset. I think <laughs> I, maybe my mindset was kind of, I always kind of have like more of a chesed uh, yeah, yeah. personality, I guess. So, uh, I would say maybe I was validated by certain stuff in TP, like kind of like my natural instinct would be not to, not to be so harsh. Well, or just get her, get her to a, get her to live in a, a, get put her in a home with other girls that are, have problems. I thought there was a place somewhere upstate. I heard, I don't know, some kind of something like there's got to be some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Right. So, so then, like well, what, <laughs> we once we, uh, once we started, like really, um, you know the de-escalation stuff, which is basically being nice to her. You know, right, it, it seems, it's so simple. It's so, <laughs> it's like sad. Like how come, it's really, in a way, it's so simple. Just be nice. Just accept her. But it has to be real. Like right, right. one thing real. is it has you to can, be real. Yeah. You can't just say like, oh, I really accept you. And But really, I can't wait till you do A, B, and C. Like it, it has to, It has, and they know if it's real or not. Like, it has to be real acceptance. We really accept you for who you are right now. Not, oh, this is what we're just doing on the side, but we really want you to be this way. No, like, the, the, we really accepted her. And we appreciated her and the things that she was able to do. And we, And it is so simple, but yet it's so... 
Yeah, it's it's funny how simple it really is, but that it's um, I mean, not that not the TP is easy. easy. Not it's easy. not easy, but it's, no, it's simple. Not easy. It's not easy. It's no, not so easy. Like, but basically, not always easy. I would say like the the turnaround. Like I, uh, I think I said before the um, uh, like using language like like a drunken sailor type language right. previously, and literally like I, I, like literally as soon as we started with TP, like never hearing a curse word or. Maybe once, maybe it could be maybe at a third, like maybe about a somebody else or something else, you know, you know, maybe, but not to me, not at all, never, ever that I could recall, and uh, yeah. and basically, uh, yeah, like really like a a, a a major shift, and as far as um, uh, you know, knowing that basically going then from that to, you know, I need uh, uh, like one time I remember she was in um, in. Uh, uh, she was coming back from somewhere, Brooklyn, friends, I don't know, whatever it was, whatever was happening. But basically, she ended up at uh, Atlantic Terminal in Brooklyn like at two in the morning, and the train was not going to be for another two hours. So, what do you do at two in the morning? You, if you're, I guess if it's pre TP, you would probably uh, think you're going to ask some stranger for a ride. I don't know what you would have done. Uh, God forbid. But like the, but uh, you know, she knew that she can call me, and I would go, and I did. I went, picked her up. I think stopped it. Uh, Someplace on the way, she wanted some food somewhere along the way. Mm. I didn't go in, but um, but basically, uh, or maybe it was take I don't know, whatever it was. But basically, that kind of uh, shift, like where knowing that she could, knowing that she could rely on her parents, and that her parents had her back. Her parents loved her. Um, her family loved her at that point, and knowing, that, and it really was like it's really like uh, um, it was like flipping a switch. It's like flipping a switch. The difference was yeah. was was like, it's like you found a medication that you have this back pain and it's terrible and then all of a sudden you find some medication like, ah, like finally this thing works. There was no prescription drugs involved as far as uh, her change of behavior. Yeah. It, was, it was basically... Miraculous. It was in basically, a way. Uh, it seems miraculous. It, is, it does seem miraculous. Ways, yeah, it does yeah. seem miraculous. It really was uh, very radical and that's, that's, uh, right. that's, that's why we're speaking here because right, right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to do this <laughs> But I think it's important, like, to help no. other people, like, kind of to hear, you know, to hear about it's it. It's such a, a game changer. It a really is. It's so simple, and it's a game changer. It, it really, for me, especially much more than my husband, who it, he, it comes naturally to him. But it was really a game changer, like, just the whole, no, like, this is what she needs. Like, she needs the softness. And by the way, it helped my other kids also, because I could accept them for who they are also. For me, it was a game changer, Sorry. because I was able to um, give to my other kids and be more giving to everybody um, for everyone. I, I think everyone benefited whether they realized it or not, but they, uh, all my kids really benefited from just the change in our, in our attitude. I think so. Even her tattoo, by the way, which she did get, um, said family is everything, yeah. which is like, you know, that interesting right. that that's what she chose to tattoo on her body. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's uh, could have been worse, true. right? Could have said the things that she used to send me the text, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, who knows what, uh, um, could have been. yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was frustrating because you know, you'd like to go, yeah, you always hope frustrating. like that the kid is the tattoos are frustrating because it's not because it's so permanent, tattoo, yeah. it's so permanent, yeah. The piercings. I mean, she only really had one piercing, and then she. Yeah, oh no, so she had a bunch of ear piercings. Stuff in those. The ears and the nose. Yeah. You, my husband went with her to get the yeah, uh, yeah, the ear piercings and the corn rolls oh, and yeah. the. Why specifically do you support and go to it? Because you're seeing that by doing that type of stuff, you have a kid that's normal, a, you know, a kid that's pretty much normal, basically normal behavior, not not Instead cutting, cutting, not cutting themselves. They're getting an ear piercing and not. Yeah not uh, threatening people and not threatening harm against uh, their, their, their parents or their siblings, you're, you have a kid that's uh, normal. No, she's acting, <laughs> right. She's acting she's basically normal. normal. She's going to school. She's, uh, and she's, she's not... And she's she not, appreciates your support yeah. that you came with her. Yeah, yeah, 100%. If you, wanna, if you want the kid to really know that you have their back, you have to really be involved in their life and have their back. Why would a parent basically be willing to do things that go against their, what they want their kid to be doing or whatever it may be? So the reason being basically, you know, why are you taking your kid to get, uh, 
to go to a hair salon that's in the wrong part of town because they want a certain hairstyle that they can only do there. Or why are you taking your daughter to a uh, place that's going to put, you know, piercings in the cartilage of the ear or whatever it is, or, or nose piercings and things like that. So like, you know, stuff that you don't really want, you don't want uh, your kid to do. Um, the reason being because you, you, you go from, uh, you know, the kid cutting themselves and hurt, harming themselves, self-harm, uh, to them basically not doing that. You have, you, you go from a kid that you think you're headed for a psych ward and, uh, you know, thousands of dollars in, uh, or, you know, treatment that probably would take years and years and years and may or may not be successful anyway. And you're doing this, uh, Said so you're yeah. accepting your 20, child, and uh, t- yeah. and you're taking them to do the thing that they want to do. For, it's better than cutting know, a twenty five dollar uh, right. certain hairstyle or uh, whatever it may be. The money is the money is uh, is very very minimal at that point. As far as it, it's it's some of it's hashkafic stuff. You know, like do you really can you really adjust to the idea that your daughter is going to have uh, these things that you don't approve of or whatever it may be? So. Why would you do that? Because you see the results that you're getting uh, a normal person. It also back. shows your acceptance of her. Yeah. Like this is what she wants. Okay. You want a, another? You want a piercing in your nose? Okay. We're going to take you. The purpose of the acceptance. The acceptance is the medication. That's what. Instead of all the drugs that she might get at a psych ward, she now has the love and acceptance of her of her parents and the rest of her family. She really was responsible. I mean, we trusted she her with was, the kids. Uh, I let her take the little kids out. I, she drove her, her her siblings to different places. She took them on errands. She was very. Uh, she was responsible. Yeah, yeah. You felt. You felt. And once you she was a she normal did. responsible. She, she was a normal responsible person. person. She held a job. She basically. She basically she went to school. Gen- she pretty much was basically what we were asking for from the therapist. Yeah. When I said to the therapist, "All I want is the kid to be." a normal functioning member of society. If she doesn't ever want to speak to me again, this is what we said pre-TP. I'm, I'm right. sitting there at a, at a, at a paying out of pocket, right? Yeah, we paid and It wasn't covered at all by insurance. You're paying out of pocket hundreds of dollars in therapy sessions. And I'm saying to this, to this therapist, I really don't care if, if, if the choice is having this kid like, you know, having, having some kind of relationship with me, but being a dysfunctional member of society that we're going to be visiting in jail or something because that's where I see this is headed. I don't yeah. see like I don't see how you're not headed for jail if you're if you're doing stuff you know like that, that was already 15, going on at 15. Yeah. Where where does it you know it's only escalating. It's not getting any better. So you have a kid that's cutting themselves. You have a kid that's threatening people. You have a kid that's uh, at the park. That's at the park and all doing hours of drugs. the night. Whatever kind of stuff going on. And then so at the time I was asking that that that. I know, like I was asking that that therapist, look, when we you agreed, we were yeah. on the same page. We said we don't I, if, even if this kid has no relationship with us, but they could just be, be a normal, yeah, law abiding, functioning. functioning member of society, that has okay. a job, whatever, whatever, like like you know, grows up and does her thing. She doesn't want to have a relationship with her parents. Okay, so be it. That's life, you know. But so that's what we were asking for. And not that you really want that, but that's what you're kind of thinking. Right. Like, and she did to, say, to her credit, to, she said, but she needs that relationship with her parents. The therapist but said it, but we didn't know how to get there. We didn't understand We that. didn't know how to get there. So basically, right. so she later, didn't help us to get there. later you end up with a normal kid, uh, a normal kid basically going to, going to school every day, no problem. Yes, yeah, she always went to school, I have Go, to say. Going to, after, after um, TV. No, yes. Yeah, so basically, like yeah. going, going to school, Post-TV. then Graduating, then going to college, yeah. and going every day to college. Not, not like you know, like not flaky, yeah. like just basically like going yeah. to college, whatever, whatever. It's not the greatest student, no. But it wasn't the greatest student. But basically, uh, you know, do, but she go, was going through, being responsible, going every day. She had day a to job school. also in the summer. She had, she had a job. Yeah, she would, she would, she was working a lot of jobs and stuff. She babysat like that. and she worked at right, a, at a store, right, yeah. local store. And um, summer. so yeah, like so you end up with. We get to the, you basically, we basically got to a point where we have a child that is what we wanted and we have a relationship with her. Right. So you have a normal kid. And that was the medicine, the relationship. You have a normal kid and, and you have a relationship. Right. And, the, and the medicine was basically a relationship. Uh, that relationship. And that was really like a nice bonding experience. The first time I flew in 21 years, I got on a plane and we went to Louisiana and it was great. And she, and she, went, she wanted to go somewhere where there was water. She wanted to go parasailing. And we took her parasailing, and she really was happy. She really it was really it was it was a great um, 
it was a great experience, really, for both of you, <laughs> the, both of the people that went parasailing. And then they also went uh, to, on a trip to Florida. That was nice. I forgot about the alcohol. <laughs> Remember, like, like before, uh, like, yeah. like, like, she like, basically uh, I had to take all the alcohol out of the house at one point yeah. because of, uh, you know, you, usually like 15 year old girls aren't supposed to be uh, drinking. drinking a lot of alcohol. <laughs> and she was. Sure. Um, and, uh, I remember like pouring it a bunch of it down the sink and stuff like, to make like a statement. Like we, I have like a, um, a message that, that I had sent to an email or a text or if it was at the time that I sent to Avi. Um, uh, once we had started TP and once we were getting into it and um, in the message, I basically, uh, I said to him, it's, it's hard. It's still hard for me not to, to not get concerned to allow my, my kip to have access to alcohol with other kips or other kids that are around. On the topic of alcohol, I should mention, it's amazing that a few months ago, I literally was dumping alcohol down the toilet in frustration with her. I remember like a big bottle of Smirnoff that I put, poured down and whiskey and things. And then I removed all the alcohol from the house because I was afraid that she was gonna drink it. Now there's no problem to have alcohol in the house. She never takes anything without permission. There's a bottle of Vodka that's berry flavored Smirnoff that I bought maybe two or three months ago and she barely touches it. Maybe a month ago, she used some of it to make some penny olive vodka. So, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a big, uh, a big change. Big change. This was basically a, uh, a, a sent to Avi a WhatsApp update at one point after. This is the first satyrs we have once we're involved with TP. And, um, it was, uh, as I said, remember, <laughs> remembering this previous Seder less than a year earlier, less than a year, basically a yeah. year earlier, not less than a year, a year earlier, the Seder a year earlier with tables being turned over and lights being turned out and complete chaos. Uh, th this message basically got Avi an update. Thank you, Avi. Our kip was at both Seders. She was involved. She was in a good mood. It is a huge difference from last year. On Pesach and Lubavitch, we are over the top with chumras at times. One example is that if we drop a utensil in the floor, on the floor, instead of just washing it, we set it aside until the following year. So the kip tells me during the meal that she was in the Pesach kitchen. Remember last year, reminded last year we had locked the door of the Pesach kitchen and she wasn't allowed in there because we, was, we were afraid what she would do. And that she had dropped a plastic fork and she assumes that we don't want to use them, so she's just letting me know where she put the plastic forks so we could either throw it out or save it for next year if we want. So the, the level of, of, of respect, the level of respect yeah. from, from Dina at that point was, was night because and day. Because we respected because her. Because we respected her, yeah. she respected us. It's accepting, it's respecting, it's... Um, just I, and a I think, I, and I, but I, I also think a lot of it is is about the kid knowing that that the parents have their back. You know what I mean? Like basically, yeah, sure. knowing that like, uh, like when they're in the principal's office because they're getting in trouble with something, when you're in TP, yeah, that it's not that, like what a difference. It's it's, the, it's a call to the parents of, like you know, and like yeah, like you know, you know, Dina, I'm, I'm got your back. Okay, I mean, that's yeah. it. I'm on your side. This is no question about it. This is a hundred percent third or fourth Pesach when we had at the Speed Seder, which I loved. And uh, so my older daughter got a little tipsy because when you have a Seder in a half an hour, mm. <laughs> she drank well, too much wine. So we, I, we finished the Seder, we went to sleep, and the kids, so Dina and the two older kids were... Um, we're laughing and Dina videoed it. So we see them, they're laughing and they're having a good time and they're joking with each other. Yeah, so they nice. had a relationship very with nice, each other, you know? Nice, yeah. They really, uh, they had had a relationship when they were growing up because they're very, all very close in age, the first three kids, even the first four kids. And, th and then it gave them their relationship back, you know, because it was nice. It was nice to, I mean, I can't say I'm thrilled that she videotaped it, but she did it without their knowledge and we have the videotape of them uh, Laughing, giggling, joking with each other <laughs> on Pesach because uh, whatever. I'm re I'm reflecting about um, Yom Kippur. I think it was this, the the second Yom Kippur, I believe, uh, in after uh, after we were involved with TP for a while, and um, Dina made it a point to um, to come to shul to come to shul early enough so that she would you know to, she reached out to me to make sure that. You know, when are you going to be at shul? What time are you going to get there? Because she wanted to make sure that I was going to be there so I can give her a bracha before, uh, like we, you know, 
what we, we do with the children. Um, uh, so we met up in shul. I did that. It was for me. It was very. Um, I felt you know, I felt very emotional. Very very. Uh, you know, made my Yom Kippur, let's say, right? Like, you know, here, just that, that would have been enough. That would, Diana, that would have been enough. Like, basically, you know, you're not expecting a kid like this to fast necessarily. You know, they're a kid. You're, you're kind of assuming that they probably won't. But then you come to find out that, um, that uh, Dina, then you see, you hear from the rabbits in that, you know, so nice. I saw Dina sitting in shul saying to Hillam on the lady's side. And, um, uh, you know, that's it's like, wow. And then, then, you know, they find out that she fasted and that she, not only did she fast, she didn't smoke. Not only did she not smoke, she didn't use a jewel or whatever. Not only did she, like, uh-huh. like all that kind of stuff. And Dina normally would have, like, you know, if she was pretty, um, didn't like to walk, you know, didn't like to walk ne- unnecessarily. So if, if uh, she needed to go uh, a few blocks away, you know, to take an Uber, you know, right? But basically, she walked like a mile and a half to a friend's house or whatever because it was Yom Kippur. So, it was she kept Yom Kippur, you know, no yeah. question about it. She kept Yom Kippur, and that's that was huge. That was like, uh, like tremendously, uh, tremendously, uh, um, uh, you know, who, know, who knows, who knows what that accomplished, who knows what that accomplished as far as, as far as, uh, you know, a soul could come down for 70 years just to, you know, just to do, uh, a favor for someone they say but basically uh, for me it was a favor like because I, I got to I got to see it um, yeah 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 huge tshuva yeah it's a tshuva it's like huge huge from the love that she was receiving it was helping her to do tshuva in a way like in you know like uh, yeah for sure it was um, yeah it was it was uh Like I, this actually is a necklace that we got her. It was on the, the the ladies' chat about these necklaces, and they were there was always good ideas, and it was it's a nice idea. And she really she wore it a lot. It says um, "Mami Tati Dinalea," and it, it with rings around each other, and it was it was special. And we got her other things, but certain things were just more, you know. She wore it. Right, I, we, and I, it wasn't perfect, and we weren't perfect, you know, it, and she wasn't perfect. Like, it, it wasn't perfect all the time, and it wasn't perfect, but it was, uh, but compared to where it was, it was amazing. I wanted to read a, um, an update that I'd sent to uh, Avi in, uh, in June of 2018. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to read it, actually, because you... you you're, it brings back uh, how happy you were and, and how, you know, the progress you were say, we were seeing. Um, basically, it was, you know, hello, Avi. TP has been amazing. Learning and, uh, has been an amazing learning and growing experience. Baruch Hashem, one year in, plus, and we have seen some great results. But one who has 100 wants 200, and one who has 200 wants 400. So basically, although our progress is in some ways miraculous, we want more. A year plus ago, we went from having a house that was being turned upside down and we were going out of our minds. A year plus ago, we had a daughter getting kicked out of school. A year plus, a year ago, we had fighting, screaming, cursing with words that would make a sailor blush. A year ago, we had, a year year and a half ago, whatever it was, before TP, we had visits to the psych ward at the hospital. We had, a year ago, we had been to various therapists. A year ago, we had rules, we had agreements, we had contracts, and they were all broken. A year plus ago, we had us taking away and breaking cell phones. A year plus ago, we had me driving around at two or three o'clock in the morning trying to find my daughter. But that was all pre-TP or BA, before Avi. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we have a normal, peaceful, and quiet home. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we had no cursing. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we have no fighting. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we have no arguments. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we have a daughter that uses words like please and thank you. Baruch Hashem, a year later, a daughter that's graduating high school a year early. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we have a daughter who feels totally comfortable in her home. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we have a daughter who brings her friends around. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we have a daughter starting college in the fall. Baruch Hashem, a year later, we try to focus on the positive. 
I encourage new TP parents to focus on TP like it's the most important thing in the world because your kids are the most important thing in the world and TP may be the only thing that can save them. Keep in mind it usually is not possible for people that have not gone through the training, the weekly groups and the manual to understand what you're doing. Be careful about telling people more info that, than, that's, than is needed. What I mean is that you don't need to talk about what you do for your child with family or friends. It really is not relevant to them. They usually will not get it. They won't understand it. It's like a new Balchuva telling them not yet from family or friends about certain things in Yiddishkeit when it could have the complete opposite effect of what they're trying to accomplish. Also, I have to add, and I'm in awe of TP parents and what they do for their kids. May you all have much, have, may you all have more success in Nachas from all of your children than you ever thought possible. Actually, I remember before TP, she would say, I'm out of here when I turn 18. I'm oh, out of yeah. here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And, and she started, we started TP when she was 16. By the time she turned 18, she was like, I'm staying. I'm <laughs> She's like, I have, you know, her room was set up. She had everything she wanted. And she, she knew it was like a very comfortable uh, place. And she was happy, more, you know, more or less happy to be there. And uh, she wasn't, she was happy to stay there and not run off. So that was good. <laughs> That was a big difference. We, we, we had a, we, things were going well, and, uh, you know, things were going well. Not perfect, but well. And um, basically, uh, basically, uh, at a certain point, um, Dina had, uh, had gone upstate New York with a friend, and uh, unfortunately, she was in a uh, car accident that... Uh, ended up being fatal. Um, you know, the, it's the hardest thing for a parent to probably ever deal with, um, I would say. Um, it's, you know, the only, the only thing that, well, not the only, I don't know if it's the only thing, but probably one of the only things that keeps me grounded on this, on this issue is uh, basically um, the story of the um, Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe that... Uh, it was with other other um, other Hasidim um, from various uh, various mindsets, and they uh, they were going around speaking about if they were God, how they would how they would run the world, and um, so the you know various people would say things like probably the average person like me would say, if I was God, children wouldn't get sick. If I was God, nobody would ever die. If I was God. You know, no, no child would ever die. Um, if I was God, the Jews would have everything perfect, whatever it would be. And the Alter Rebbe at the time said to, the, to them, if I was God, I wouldn't change anything because I would have, uh, I would have like a, a, a you know, the, the global picture to kind of understand what's, what, what, what God's doing. God knows what he's doing. You know, obviously God's our father. He knows he, he's got it. Um, just like, we need to have these our kids' backs. God has our backs. It's just we don't always see it sometimes. We don't always feel it sometimes, maybe. But we have to always remember it. Um, so that personally, that keeps me like grounded as far as as far as uh, the that what happened. Um, you know. But the, I would say that the important things, the important takeaways for, or the important things for me to reflect about, or for parents to reflect about, the important things for people to reflect about would be. Um, I can only imagine, like, if 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 Dina was going to live 19 years, and this was the time that was going to be allotted, because this is decided when a soul when a neshama comes down from Shemayim, the time is 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 a lot is, is a certain amount of time is going to be given, and um, that's it's, that's going to be the person's life, and we don't know we don't know when that when that what that time is going to be right. So, if if it was going to be 19 years. Um, we could have been in a very different place. We could have been in a situation where Dina could have been um, completely estranged from us. It's v it, that's where we were headed. I mean, basically, um, she could have been. Um, it's not likely we would have had a good relationship any other way possible. Right. And um, and that's why, yeah, you know, basically we have tremendous Akar Satov about to, to for TP for Avi Absolutely. because of what. So we, had a we had a relationship. We had a relationship. We had a relationship with our daughter. We had a relationship with our daughter. And yeah. we wouldn't have. We had a good relationship. We probably wouldn't we had a, have. We had a good relationship, a decent relationship, a, a loving relationship. She knew we loved her. 
Um, and we did what we could. We, you know, and, we weren't perfect. And she loved us. And basically, we weren't perfect, but no. but we uh, we we came a long way. Having to get a, a, a knock at the door, like a like the the, the classic, uh, you know, thing knock at the door from the police. Um, to, to tell the parents that, that the hospital is trying to reach you or whatever it is and uh, having to then drive because there were no flights available to Buffalo and Motsi Shabbos at that time um, having to drive however many hours was it like seven, yeah. hours, seven or eight hours and uh, uh, Dina basically hanging on uh, for those for that whole time um, us getting there and then um you know, having to be in the, having, being in a room, uh, have as your, as your child, as a as a, as your daughter's uh, passes away basically, and then is resuscitated, and then passes away, and then is resuscitated, and again, um, more than once, um, is uh, is is hard. It's not no question about it. It's hard, but I I, th- I mean I think that. Uh, the, the alternative, as far as we believe in Hashem, we believe that Hashem's running the show. And if, if we believe that, and we know that, then this, the, time, the time was going to be what the time was going to be. And, um, you know, so knowing that we need to, uh, we need, we, we're just, we're, I'm very appreciative that we had uh, um, the good relationship that we did. Yeah. Um, really, th- it turns out we thought we were doing this for Dina and in a way we really did it for ourselves because all the gifts and all the videos, which I, I took more because of her and all the, the time bombs and they turned out to really be for us. <laughs> we were giving to her, but really those that's what we have. Those are our memories that we have of the parasailing and the and- crocodiles and... Going to great, you never know. great adventure. Parent, you never know, right? Yeah, sorry. No, I just the, the, and the kids too. The older kids yeah. too. They also they they did things with her. We we would have all been estranged from her. It would have been a totally different story without DP. If she was going to be here 19 years, like my husband said, thank God for TP that we had that relationship. The relationship was everything, and that's what TP is about. It's about that relationship, about that connection with your child, and accepting them for who. He or she is. So we're glad that we did that. I think we would have had a lot more regrets. I mean, you always have some regrets, but we would have had a lot more regrets had we not had that that relationship with her. Yeah. And it's important, basically, you know, no, you never know. I guess anybody in your life, you never know how somebody's, uh, when somebody's time is. It's never over. I said, as long as she's alive, it's never over. And I didn't know that she was going to die a few months later, but, but, but it was true. As long as, as long as the, your kip is alive, it is not over. There's always, if they're not doing well, so they can do well next week. There's always hope and they, for a better tomorrow, always. As long as that person is alive, always hope. There's always hope. As long as that kid's alive, it's not over. It just, even if, even if they intermarry, even if they this, even if they that, even if they're gay, even if, whatever it is, it's just never over as long as they're alive. I mean that. I really meant it when I said it to my kids. I I mean it. It's not over because they still need you. Even if this, 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 and this, they still need that relationship no matter what's going on. And they're still your child. And I told that to my kids, and, and they got it at the time. And they, they had, and like I said, they had a decent relationship with her, even though, you know, sometimes it could be volatile here and there, but overall it was good. And it was really due to TP, otherwise it wouldn't have been. It's important for any parent to know you never know how long a child, everyone should live to 120, 150, 180, we say these days. But basically, um, but basically, we never—you never really know. Right, that's for uh, any child. Enjoy your, enjoy your, enjoy your. So enjoy you need to, have. you need to, like, when the, when the, when things are not always so easy, you need to remember, like, it's it's that important. It's so important to do everything you possibly can do. Uh, to have that relationship. To have that relationship, and to do, and to, and to, 
you know, like to, to push, to push yourself to do more and to push yourself to do what you, you know, don't get complacent and don't like, you know, that if I, if I have any regrets, I would be that I didn't, that I would say like, it's that we didn't do more, you know, we should have taken another trip. We should have done this, should have done that, whatever it is. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you got to make the most of every, uh, of the time we have with everyone in our lives. So, uh, make the time, right? Go on that vacation. So Dina was always the sweetest kid growing up. Just like Avi says, like, they're always the smartest, the sweetest. Dina was the sweetest. She had the sweetest smile. She smiled at everyone. Yeah. And she was very sensitive also. But she was just so sweet. And then, um, and then all of a sudden, like, 14, she so. was this, I guess I just thought it was a teenage thing. Like, she was this 14-year-old, you know, so, what seemed crazy to us, you know, all these things going on. And and we just, and then just everything escalated. And then we, and then TP made us realize, like, no, she's not, she's not crazy. She just is in pain and she needs um, TP. <laughs> she needs our acceptance and our our love and and then we saw sweet Dina again you know we got back you got her back we got her back we got our sweet Dina back for a little while yeah I am on a group with, of mothers who lost children and and there are people that were estranged from their from their children and they they and they lost them and it is it is a harder situation to be in to, to not have had a relationship or to have been estranged. I'm very grateful for TP that we had a relationship with Dina, that we were able to really accept her for who she was. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm really, especially because she passed away at 19, I, I'm really happy that we, I don't know if happy is the right word, but I'm, I'm grateful that we have that, that we had that relationship with her. I, I really, we, everyone has regrets, but I, I have very little regrets because that we, uh, I think we we did the best that we could with the knowledge we had, and and thank God that we, really thank God that we found TP because it would have been a different story otherwise. The more that we work on ourselves, the more that we can, uh, the more that we can hope to see um, good results and uh, positive improvements in the kids. I had such a good picture of my kids with her because they, they're, they're taking selfies. She's totally nuts to me. As my boys with their yarmulkes and sitsits and white shirts, they're all, uh, you know, hanging out with her. I think, it's, uh, it's so, I think that to me is so nice. My son said to me once, my, my two daughters saw him in Crown Heights and they, on the streets, and he's in, he's, you know, in yeshiva there. And I said, aren't you embarrassed? Like, aren't you embarrassed that they're, like, Dina's sitting there, like, she's nuts to me. He's like, I'm not doing anything wrong. It's my sister. Why should I be embarrassed? You know, like it was really like, TP helped him so much. He, he was a head counselor last year and he was so good. Like if a kid was late for davening, like he didn't like give them a, like he did it like in a nice way, like, oh, it's time for davening. Like he never like, he wasn't harsh. Like I think that they came from his, from the whole TP thing and about not, not trying not to give kids like, you know, from trauma, you know, <laughs> like, okay, you should really come daven now. Like he was soft spoken about it and. Okay, so you didn't do a dive in to tomorrow or well, whatever it was, you know, like he, but I really think it was from his TP. Uh... Sometimes like the, 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 cha the challenges or the, 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 the quote unquote negative experiences, you know, like the kid getting kicked out of school um, or the, or CPS being called on the, on the family and or having to, uh, what? Or sometimes there's a car accident and the oh. kid needs you. And right, whatever it may be, something where there's a, where there's a, where there's a, where there's something neg, quote unquote negative, very often those, those events are, are where you get the greatest opportunity to, to improve on the relationship. So, uh, I'm, you know, specifically I remember like one time when, when Dina was having a problem with, uh, she, it was pretty early on, very early on after we joined TP, yeah, right? It was, because, it was pretty so she was basically being kicked out of uh, school because while her parents were, uh, embracing the concepts of TP, the school had no idea of the concepts of TP. So basically, <laughs> they were doing normal chenich. That meant if the kid didn't listen or didn't do something, then they get in trouble. Or if they think that the kid's doing something wrong, they get in bigger trouble. So, um, you know, that's an opportunity where when the school's kicking the kid out and you're taking their side in the fight instead of saying like what I normally always would have said right. before, which is, you know, the unhala is... 
you know, if they're on holiday, you know, that's it. They're right. You know, you always you support the print. The principal is right. The teacher's right. You know, that's it. Like even if they're wrong, they're right. But that uh, that that you have an opportunity when the when the, when your child is is um, is in a, is in, in not a good spot to uh, right. to shine and to and to. Right. To come that's through. when they see that. That's when you they have really your back. see. That's when they really get to see that they have your back, and they, and that right. that's huge. That's right. you don't want those challenges necessarily, but right. when they happen, because they will happen, unfortunately, right. when you have those challenges, uh, you know, thank she, thank God she was never arrested. But I'm saying like you know, a kid getting arrested or a kid uh, having a problem, whatever the problem may be, that's when you get the real opportunity. Right. It's true. Right. If somebody out there wants to uh, do something, uh, my daughter, for, for, for her, um, basically when you see a kid, when you see a kid, any, any, uh, any Jewish kid that you see struggling, you know, you, that you know the signs, you know, you know what they look like, um, whatever it may be, give the kid a smile. If it's appropriate, give the kid a hug. <laughs> Um, a kind word. Don't look the other way. Don't think like, oh, they don't see me. I don't have to talk to them. I could ignore them. Be, uh, you know, it doesn't have to take a lot. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be that you're, that you're uh, turning the world over for the kid, but basically, oh, that would be nice. But basically, uh, anything that you can do to, 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 to have a kind word or a, uh, or a kind outlook to the child, to this kid, or whoever they are, teenager, young adult, um, because it, 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 well, that's what I'm asking you. You're asking if, if you want to do something for my daughter, that's what you could do. But it's also, it's, it's, uh, you're actually doing something for yourself. You're, you're, you really, uh, you really, uh, we have no idea of the impact that we're having, um, uh, to tip the scales and bring Mashiach. So if someone wants to do something that's, uh, uh, for, for Dina, for Dina Leia Basman Achimendel, that's her, that's her name. Um, yeah, basically, uh, that would be it. For all the parents that are, um, that are struggling with their, with the kids and, and dealing with, with all the challenges that, that, that comes with, um, you know, you see that it's escalating and you see it's escalating sometimes and you see it's going in the wrong direction sometimes, you know? So, so it's time to get to TP. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, give it, For real. you have to really, you have to really love the kid. You have to really, uh, uh, and they have to find out what it means to love that kid right. and how to love that kid. Um, it may not be what, uh, what, it might not be conventional, but it works. Yeah. Yes. When the, when the going is getting tougher, it, or anytime is it, is the time to basically step it up, love the kid more, Hug the kid more, kiss the kid more. You never know. Chas to shalom. God forbid, no one should ever deal with what we have to deal with. Um, no one ever should have to deal with this again. But um, if if it helps you to, if it helps you to 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 give you the uh, the, the 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 push to do something to go out of your out of your regular. Uh, Daladamas or whatever to, to do something that you you're not you're not it doesn't come so easy sometimes because it doesn't come so easy sometimes for us or it didn't come so easy for sometimes sometimes for us push yourself give that kid that hug give that kid that kiss because like I said nobody should ever deal with this again but uh, it could be that that it that it's possible so yeah just nobody knows how much time they have so make the most of it in a positive way yes. As long as that kid's alive, it's not over. It's just, even if, even if they intermarry, even if they this, even if they that, even if they're gay, even if, whatever it is, it's just never over as long as they're alive. I mean that. Like, I really meant it when I said it to my kids, yeah. I, I mean it. It's not over because they still need you. Even if this, 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 and this, they still need that relationship, no matter what's going on. And they're still your child. I give a bracha to all the TP <laughs> parents that um, they should be successful uh, with their TP, with their accepting of their child. They should see the most amazing things from their children and, and all the 
all the the pain should be released and they should become who they really are underneath it all. And uh, really, we should just see Mashiach like right away so we don't have to go through this anymore. We give a bracha for Avi for to, to hopefully, hopefully Avi will be out of business soon because uh, <laughs> this thing is going to get so good for everybody. Um, but uh, yeah, like really uh, the strength to keep doing what you do and to... Keep helping people. <laughs> Help people. It's really a game changer. And-